Welcome to Co-op Mode, round 153. This is the official video game podcast of Secret Friends Unite. I am one of your hosts, Todd Oxtra, from beautiful Savage, Minnesota. It's been a little cold, but we're getting ready for turkey time. It's amazing here. I've been able to take off the week to play a lot of video games, so I'm excited to talk about them with some really cool people. Bringing in my Canadian friend, Mark Carabin, who already got to experience Canada Thanksgiving back in October when we were all That's thinking correct. about spooky things like poultry geists. So Mark is already beating us up, but he gets to still experience Black Friday. So Mark, are you yeah. ready for Black Friday? I, you know what? I think I took advantage of some early Black Friday sales. Uh, so I, I think I've already Black Fridayed my brains out this weekend and maybe went a little too, uh, too hard, but here we are. I'll talk about some stuff later on, but yeah, totally, uh, enjoying the, uh, American Turkey week festivities, uh, and, and, uh, black Friday events for sure. Excellent. Well, we are joined by a very special guest, uh, a gentleman who has been around uh, for uh, the many stages of video game media um, and also from the early stages of anime coverage. And that is CJ, Chris Johnston, a.k.a. Super Pack on social media. Uh, he's a co-host and producer of Player One Podcast, but also uh, was previously involved with Adult Swim's games. Uh, yeah, did some great games there. And now he's involved in AR and VR. So yeah. CJ, what, what, do you, what do you prefer? I know people call you that. Some people call me Ox. But what do you, what do you, what, you know, when it comes to it, what do you really love to be called? You can call me CJ. Everybody, my, my friends, my good friends and coworkers have always called me CJ. Yeah. I'm glad you said that. My good friends <laughs> say that. So call me Chris. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> we appreciate that. <clears throat> well, very good. So uh, we're, we're really happy to have you on. You're such an, uh, a joyful presence on social media. Um, and it's been amazing. And you're now on Blue Skies. Like I think everybody has gone to. I was on Threads. Threads is a little clunky because there's no DM. So I was Insta messaging on Instagram because I'm like, apparently they don't want me to talk to people through that app. So we were able to connect. So though, thank you for having your DMs open. Um, and no, I was not trying to uh, pitch you ideas on getting more SOE on your podcast. <laughs> that's typically what it is yeah yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> which is amazing um but uh before we get started we always like to get to know people a little bit better about their gaming history sure. so the first question i always ask is what is the first system you ever owned oh the first video game system i ever owned was a magnavox odyssey 2 back in the, oh wow uh, in the 80s yeah it uh it was right around the time the industry crashed in 84. My parents, uh, we had been, my brother and I had been begging my parents for some video game system, anything <clears throat> for so long. And they, uh, they held out, but we, since the crash happened, everything was so super cheap that they relented. And we got the, uh, <clears throat> we got the Odyssey 2 with the voice modulator plug in also and then we got a bunch cool. of games because the games were super cheap too the games were like four bucks so wow. we loaded up on games and we didn't know that the crash happened or anything like that all we knew was that we had video games in the house now so we could play casey munchkin which was kind of like pac-man and yep. pickaxe pete which was kind of like donkey kong <laughs> and then there was a quest for the rings game that was kind of like an rpg and yeah, all that stuff. So yeah, we we had so cool. a, a lot of fun with our very cheap video games while the industry was dead. So it was fantastic. That was my first video game system. I'm an I, old schooler. Uh, oh, I, my first was the Atari Fifty Two Hundred. Um, Ooh, very nice. Once again, a uh, system that was very cheap. My parents. Uh, they're like, well, the 2600 is really popular. Let's get you the 5200, and it doesn't play any of those cool games. Here's a system that had one of the worst joysticks in all the world, had like a weird overlay on its control with a numpad. And I looked yep. at the like the Odyssey, too. I was pulling up. It looked like a computer keyboard, and I have no yeah. clue what you would do with that keyboard. Yeah, it had a keyboard on it, and you could, uh, well, the the Quest for the Rings game, you could enter in player names i think or something like that and then oh. we also had a 
stock market like simulator game that you could Ooh. enter things in. I didn't even know how to play that thing. That was <laughs> way beyond my comprehension at the time. But yeah, and uh, the voice module, it would speak to you too. Some of it, some of those games. So pretty, pretty That's cool. Awesome. Yeah, full, full keyboard right there. You had to really touch those down because it was like the number pad on any of those controllers. Oh. It wasn't a good keyboard. It was like you really had to press. Membrane with a little raised pad. Yeah, those were the exactly. worst. Exactly. Yeah. Did your did your parents know what they were getting into with the voice modulator thing? Or did they think this was like some kind of Ouija board demon talking <laughs> to you guys like through a TV? Like, did what, what was the situation there? They're like, this is a great thing for kids. I thought uh, they thought it was awesome. And it was okay, also cool. super cheap, so <laughs> perfect. Yeah, it's like you That's could. Ta- did, would it, did it have like a type mode where you type in like a word, it would speak it? I, I think it probably did. Okay. Yeah, it had kind of a, like a hangman game or something like that, uh, okay. kind of similar. Yeah, and it had like uh, math games that it would then speak as well. Yeah, cool. Wow, it was Gotta a cool system. It. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, there's always somebody has a friend that has like the ColecoVision or the Intellivision. I had a friend that had ColecoVision. My uncle had Intellivision. So we were pretty well-rounded and like, you know, systems that quite honestly, Mark has probably never heard of. He's a little younger. I I had an Intellivision. My my first console was was an NES, but my uncle had owned an Intellivision that a little later when I started kind of getting into more like video game history and stuff uh, you know probably closer to like junior high high school um but i i went back and 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 found like the old Intellivision and um and you know tried out some of those games and that you know i forget what the other one there was another one too that i could never get to work but i remember the the like controllers and like those like the number pads and that kind of stuff that um that you're describing so um but my yeah my proper first console was yeah is an nes makes sense um okay cj number question number two okay um what was the first video game that you fell in love with oh this is easy uh crystal castles oh nice it's an atari arcade game it's the, the bear with yeah. the magic hat he had the bear with the magic hat and you had to like use a trackball controller that lit up as well. And you had to like use the trackball to collect all of these little gems in each of the levels. And it was sort of like an isometric 3D ish perspective. You had to kind of like a Pac-Man maze almost happening and you had to avoid enemies and uh, collect the gems. This was the first game. This was it was located at an ice cream parlor in the the small city that I uh, grew up in. And this was the first game that I learned there were cheats or like uh, Easter eggs in a game. Like this, this guy who was really good at the game showed me this level skip trick where you could skip from like the first or second level to like level 10 or 20 or something like that. And I thought that was so amazing that here like is this game and there's a secret thing inside of it that like gives you an advantage in score. I thought it was so cool. So that was like the first game that I was really all about. And I was pretty, pretty good at it too. could get on the leaderboard. It's, it's tough with arcade games because unless you live close, I mean, when's the next time I'm going? Well, yeah. Yeah. My mom was at a bowling, was on a bowling league and that's when I got to play arcade games. So yeah. Nice. All right. The last question. What was the last first question. console you bought with your own money? Who with my own money. Okay. This is uh, going to be, I think, the Sega Master System. Sega Master System. Cool. Well. What was yeah. the like, must-have game on the master? Like, I, if I'm, I need the master system because I need to play Alex <laughs> Kidd and Miracle World. Uh, no, Kukul- well, no. Do you remember the other? Was it? Kukul- Have you played Land? that game? That game is tr- certified trash. Oh yeah, it's tough. <laughs> it's tough. It's really tough. My 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 other friend had a Sega Master System with those weird game cards, and yeah, yeah. It was uh, it was Double Dragon. 
So oh, I, yeah. on the NES, I was such a fan of Double Dragon. Uh, that game is absolutely amazing. And then I heard, oh, well, it's coming out on the Sega Master System and it's better on the Master System. So I was like, holy crap, I got to get a Master System so that I could play this amazing version of of Double Dragon. And then also, like, I would see in magazines, like, ads for Fantasy Star and Shinobi. Mm-hmm. And it's like, those, these games look awesome. They look better graphically than nes games at the time and hey you know they've got the light gun but they also have 3d glasses and i i had the 3d glasses that did the the 3d missile earth defense or whatever uh i thought that was just so super cool uh it didn't really i mean obviously the master system didn't do well in the market so (laughs) eventually software support kind of died out uh, and I, I got rid of the master system, unfortunately, but, uh, love some of the games on it. Yeah. That was the first one I bought with my own money. Yeah. Once again, a hidden treasure. I mean, I, and yeah. I don't even remember seeing commercials for it as a kid. I mean, I watched a lot of cartoons at the time, so I'm like, I don't know how people found out about this system because there weren't video game magazines really at that point. Yeah, there were a few, yeah. but they were really hard to find. They weren't like everywhere like they were later. Uh, the way that I discovered the master system was in the Midwest, there was this chain called Montgomery Ward. Oh yes. Monkey and they, they had a, uh, an electronics department that I, it might've been called electric Avenue at the time. They like spun it off and they had like a master system area. And I, uh, got my first taste of, of master system graphics there and thought it was awesome. It's amazing. Uh, yeah, Montgomery Ward service merchandise. There were a lot of <laughs> even Ace yeah. Hardware had like video games for some reason. Don't know why it just happened. <laughs> well, and uh, around the holidays, I don't know if you do this. I definitely do this. I growing up the Sears catalog or like the JCPenney catalog, like they had the Sears wish book. Mm-hmm. I was like so into just looking at pictures of toys in these yep. Christmas catalogs. Right. And uh, like circling the things and like dog earing the pages of all the things yep. that I might want. And you can find, you know, archives of those online. And I just those are amazing. I always flip through those around the holiday time just to get that nostalgia and that feeling of being excited about new video games. Some of those, by the way, never even came out. They were just like listed as a title Maybe you saw a screenshot or artist's rendition of of the uh, of what the game would look like, but you still circled it. You're like, oh, Police Academy for NES? Yeah, I'll go <laughs> ahead and circle that. Yes. <laughs> oh, that, that is amazing. Yes, I, I remember doing that. And actually, it's funny because my wife was, we've gotten catalogs again in the mail. Mm. So it's, I, I don't know if they're coming back or not, but yeah, yeah, circle them and say, we, I want all of these like things, a- mom and dad. Yeah. Like an Amazon wish book knockoff kind of thing mm-hmm. uh, this ah. year. So it's kind of interesting. And, and, you know, like having a four-year-old, I I kind of like, I, I want that kind of like flipping through that, the Sears catalog wish book magic kind of thing. And I was like, okay, I, you know, if, if it's Amazon that's sending this thing, like there's still like a physical thing that he can go and circle. He, he really wants Hulk hands. Um, ah. That's like his one thing. And um so, you know, it's like, go, oh, okay, man, buddy, buddy, like, let's, let's find the whole cans. Let's, let's see what you want and we'll make sure, you know, that's on your, that's on your list. Um, but like, you know, so that there, there is something like magic about that, like wish book. Absolutely. Feel. Yes. Knowing Amazon, they would just have normally send you just a fire HD and said, here you go. Everybody gets one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so all these ads enjoy. Um, Dinosaur Dracula, if you like that type of vibe, Dinosaur Dracula is a site I thoroughly enjoy. He does like the old Macy days parade as well. Like he'll show like it's he man. And why were the Smurfs in this? And it's Tony Danza. It's really, <laughs> that's one of the best things in the world. Macy's day parade from the eighties. Too good. It's wonderful. I love that. It's, I love it's, that. It's, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> well, thank you for the memories, Chris. Everybody knows you a little bit better now. So with that though, we've got to get into our thank you to the cool people that make this show happen. And that is our Patreon secret friends squad. So Mark, who are these awesome people? These awesome people include our besties tier, Derek Trevelyan, AKA the figure dude, Francie, the official hairstylist of Charlie, 
the SFU, I suppose. Um, I'm just still waiting for my my official SFU due, but uh, we'll we'll see. Um, Francie, I don't know if she does house calls internationally, but uh, we'll we'll go from there. Uh, Xbox expansion pass and Charlie's Uncle Tim. The friends with benefits tier includes John Sedorf, the Enix Sisters Entertainment, Brennan Myers, Corey NHD, aka the Boss Rush CEO, Matthew Keel, and. Kurt Krug, aka he's got connections, uh, yes. as well as our secret friends, Super Squad. That is the amazing Nias family, including Sean, Stella, and Henry. Thank you all. Uh, you can head over to patreon.com slash secret friends unite for a free seven day trial where you can get all of the benefits, exclusive shows, no ads, discord benefits, all that kind of stuff. Try it out. And if you like it, stick around for as little as $2 a month and, uh, and get all that stuff early, including this week I dropped uh, Holocron Chronicles early. It was an exclusive um, interview that I did with EK Johnson who wrote uh my book was around here somewhere with the, the Ahsoka novel and the Padme trilogy, really cool star Wars interview. Um, and, and a bunch of other great early, great exclusive shows, early drops, all that kind of stuff. So again, uh, patreon.com slash secret friends, unite, check us out. And if you don't feel like, or can't drop a couple of bucks our way, that's okay. Subscribe on YouTube, share the show, tell a friend, everything helps just as much as uh, as throwing a couple of bucks our way everything is uh, is very much appreciated but once again thank you so much for the people that do uh support us in our free secret friend squad yeah uh we've been really lucky with interviews lately you had your awesome yeah. interviews when you were at halcon um charlie got to interview uh um Leonard Nimoy's son, David Nimoy, he just had a new book. Yeah. So that was a really cool interview he did uh, talking about his book. And, you know, he did. I, I didn't realize this. He like he directed like episodes of Babylon 5 and different things like that. Wasn't really as involved in Star Trek. So it was very cool. But it was more a book about him and his relationship with his father. So really cool mm -hmm. there. And then we got to interview Al Jean from The Simpsons, you know, yeah. the Simpsons mega Simple. producer. That was an amazing thing, too. Really yeah. cool guy. So if you want to check those out, check out Patreon. Check out a uh, free trial there. Um, the cool part is, though, I also uh, have a code for uh, Coddle of Duty uh, Black Ops 6 that I would like to give away for Xbox. And all you need to Sweet. do is just either sign up for a, a trial on Patreon, leave a review on iTunes or Spotify, subscribe and comment on our YouTube video, and just DM me on Blue Skies or DM, DM me on Instagram um, at Tioxtra at Todd Oxtra there. So and we'll reiterate that when we get to the end of the show, when everybody gets to give away their credentials. Excellent. So with that, so Chris, this is something I need to prepare CJ. for. CJ, oh, that's you're, you're right. officially a friend now. Come that's on. right. That's right. And I see you're a cat <laughs> fan. Saw your cat go behind you. So yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I love little cats. Uh, so CJ, yeah. um, we do a segment called Buy, Rent, Return. You're an old hat. You remember you going yeah. to Blockbuster. Some games sure you do. bought. Because, you know, you you could buy them for like, I don't know, uh, back in the early days, $85. But then they got cheaper. Uh, but then you could rent them or you could just like, oh, this is horrible. Didn't work. Broken my player. Return it. So uh, we do that with our segment weekly. And then this week, I thought because of the Game Awards and all the hubbub there, I wanted to go back even further to the Spike VGX Awards. This was on Spike. Started in 2003. So now we're like... 21 years of game awards, whether they were Spike or the, the game awards. So, um, and I want to look at their hosts. So it was very interesting. There's a cavalcade of interesting hosts who did the VGX. Samuel Jackson hosted four times. That's, That's amazing. Insane. Yeah, I love that. Hell yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, let's see. Jack Black hosted in 2008. Neil Hat, I believe that was the one where he kept on talking Tim Schaefer and he kept shouting his name out. That was pretty awesome. Uh, 2010, Neil Patrick Harris. Uh, 2011, Zachary Levi. Enough about Zachary. We don't have to talk about Zachary anymore. Uh, and then um, Joel McHale in 2013. He was the last host of uh, the Game Awards and then it turned into the VGAs in 2014. Um, but I picked three different hosts. And you gentlemen have to pick to buy, rent, and return Neil Patrick Harris, Snoop Dogg, or David Spade. So, CJ, pick 
pick wisely. Oh man, this is this is a tough one here. I think I'm going to uh, buy Neil Patrick Harris. I think uh, it would be legendary. Dairy. Yeah. High five. Uh, I, I it's been a while since I've suited up, so yeah, suit up, <laughs> wingman sort of thing. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, he seems like a he seems like a really good guy. You know, chill. Uh, Snoop Dogg. I think I'd rent Snoop Dogg. I think Snoop Dogg uh, is is awesome. Just it's been an amazing ride to look at where he started as a rapper and has become like just a pop culture icon and a style icon. And it would be great to get his uh, opinion on like the decor of my house, right? Like, <laughs> or <laughs> like do some cooking with Snoop Dogg. I, I, that would be awesome. He can bring Martha Stewart with him. That'd be exactly be cool too. I'd, I, I'd, so I'd rent Snoop and then I'd uh, of course return David Spade because Joe Dirt, I'm sorry. Uh, you're back in the bin. You're you're getting, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had to include that picture of David Spade as Joe Dirt. It's just, <laughs> the mullet just too too great to to keep down. Yeah, okay, yeah. Mark, those are good picks, CJ. I love that. Uh, and picks. by the way, Snoop will bring over a pair of uh, his uh, his. <laughs> I, I saw he had some some really interesting Skechers shoes, which is the funny part is like Snoop Dogg and Skechers. It just doesn't seem like it works because Skechers <laughs> is like for old people, but Snoop Dogg makes them re- legit. So there you go. It's true. Yeah. Uh, for me, I I could spin this in two different ways hmm. because one, it, like picking, I think like, like CJ said, so you know, if Snoop was coming over my house, kind of thing, I think that'd be pretty, pretty badass. Um, and I may pick the same way, but I'm going to, I'm going to first read one of our writing comments, and that's the Winter oh. Gamer, uh, because I think I'm also going to copy that. Uh, so Winter Gamer, Brennan Myers, buy Snoop because he's a national treasure and actually games, actually plays video games. Like Snoop is going to be the big season ender for this season of Fortnite. Snoop, Eminem, Ice Spice, Ah, and a tribute to Juice World. Um, He is like not only a gamer, he is in video games. So I, you know, hard to argue with Snoop being in some sort of like video game space. And I think, you know, uh, as a host, somewhat a host who is also a gamer, I think is kind of special. So as a host of a video game award shows, I think I have to buy Snoop. Uh, rent Neil Patrick Harris because fun musical numbers suiting up every okay. commercial break saying, you know, we're going to do the game of the year. It's going to be a legend. And then you got to wait for the commercial break. And then he comes back and says, dairy fun times. Uh, so yeah, agree with, with winter gamer rent NP uh, MPH could go for a fun musical number and return David Spade because he'll just feel out of place. Uh, no offense to David Spade. Um, you know, I like, we just watched, uh, grownups not that long ago. Uh, oh. David Spade and, um, Chris Adam Rock, Sandler, Chris the crew, Rock, right? That, that whole yeah. crew, right. Um, yeah. just randomly like, a, what do you want to watch it? And just kind of like flicking through one of the streaming <laughs> services. And then grownups was there. And I was like, yeah, you know what? We haven't seen this in 15 years. Um, and it, you know, it's a, it's such a, a stupidly fun movie. Um, but like as a video game award host, I don't know if he fits. So yeah, Brennan Myers, I'm, I'm stealing your answer. Great, great answers. <laughs> like it too. Okay, Mark. Well, I think you're, I think you picked wisely. I think you mm. picked wisely. Um, I'll hit Chipotle bear. Uh, he says, buy Snoop, rent out dirt, return Neil Patrick Harris. And then uh, bacon, uh, X bacon gaming says buy Snoop rent. Neil Patrick Harris and return Joe dirt. So I, I kind of feel like we've got a uh, culmination except for the rare Joe dirt didn't get returned. I think he's only been returned not only once. So I'm going to say I'm going to, I don't know if this is even possible. I'm going to buy 
both Neil Patrick Harris and Snoop Dogg because I think they would make a great like odd couple. Can they host like, together? Yes. yes. Why not? Wait. Why can not? you do that in the rules of uh, of this game? Can you do that? Can you buy both? Well, See, I'm, CJ, I'm gonna both- I'm gonna fill you in on something. Todd makes up the rules as we go, <laughs> and often changes them. Much to my detriment and the you, uh, you know tearing apart of my mental sanity. So uh, after we give our perfectly valid answers that follow the rules, Todd's going to make some shit up that <laughs> makes us a little crazy. So the the sooner you accept that, the the more this show makes sense. All right, all right. <laughs> yeah. Mark usually has to ask like a clarifying question, like when you say. Um, Spike host, you're talking about like the because worst host like or yes. best host, and I'm like, thank you for bringing that up, Mark. It's like it's like the you know the <laughs> it's like the curse of the monkey paw. Like if you don't ask the right question, you might get like, oh, yeah. I get all the money in the world, but I and but it's because you it's stole because it because of this right. like double yeah. host duty thing that you you never dropped <laughs> that we could do. It's yeah, all right. Well, I'm gonna buy like I said, I'm gonna buy both of them because I think they would be great together. Absolutely. Snoop would be like the casual guy when 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 Neil's getting a little too like, uh, Neil, this is your fifth musical number. We bring <laughs> it back. Um, there we go. Um, and then I'm gonna rent David Spade and return Joe Dirt. Does that work? Oh, okay. Wow. All right. So no David Spade as a host, but if he does Joe Dirt, he's fired. And we well, get Snoop and NPH back. David Spade might be good for like one category where he's the presenter, right? Right. Okay. Maybe he's yeah. got one good joke that doesn't offend the whole audience. But yeah. Joe Dirt's going to get up there and it's going to go bad. So he's going to be returned. <laughs> All right. I, I, I okay. Dig. Okay. Well, very good. Strong um, lineup. Yes. I, I think so. Yeah. I mean, you know, and now you understand why Keeley's been the, the only host for his show because. Well, Jeff Keighley. Uh, yeah. There we go, go. I got to go to the Game Awards last year and uh, witness the whole thing. It was great Very to cool. see how everything was produced uh, from the auditorium. It was uh, it was amazing. Did you wow. get shots of caffeine that allowed you to stay up for what? How long? That was that'd be really it was a long. long show. Yeah, it was like yeah. three and a half hours long. Yeah. Uh, no, I didn't need any caffeine. I was uh, I was. Uh, all, juiced on the energy of all the trailers and ads that I saw. It was great. Plus yeah. you got that amazing Fantastic. performance by <sighs> Sam Lake. And yes. I mean, that, ah, that was a, that'd be amazing. That was astounding to be able to witness in person. And I was pretty close to the stage too. Cause, um, the, one of the games that we did, uh, humanity was in, uh, the VR AR awards category nominated for an award. So, got invited to the show and yeah, got to sit pretty close up and watch that amazing musical number, which was awesome. And see the actors from fallout come out on the stage and just everything was, it was great. Yeah. Yeah. And that was before fallout was out, right? That's right. Yeah. Oh, wow. She was a couple of months before. Yeah. 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 Um, One question about um, humanity. Um, I played it on PS4. It's on uh, or PS5. um, And then uh, it was on VR two, VR one and VR two or just VR. It's both. Yeah. It's VR one and VR two. One or two. Depending on which system PS4 or PS5 you're playing on. And it's also on quest. It is also Mm -hmm. on quest. Yeah. That's amazing. It's fantastic. on Quest too. That game at times breaks my brain. It's, you know, it's, it's an amazing game. And I remember my friend, Sean Nias, who he's one of the people I do. I do a fantasy football podcast with them. He is big into VR. He has VR two. He has the Oculus quest one. He are three. And then he played humanity. He's like, this is just crazy. So I've, I've never played in VR, so I don't even know what it's like, but just playing it regularly was it's a, a very, lot for me. It, it's a different experience in VR. Cause yeah. you can see everything at once. Yeah. Like there's no screen cutting you yeah. off. So you can really like get into the puzzles. It's uh it's awesome. Yeah. Very cool. That's awesome. Well, we'll talk about what we've been gaming and Mark will be talking about VR. Um, CJ, we're going to have you go first, actually. So uh, what have you okay. been gaming? Uh, well, I have been playing a little more Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. Uh, a, a fantastic game, you know, harkens back to those old school top down days of Zelda, but also giving you the freedom and, uh, you know, the freedom to solve puzzles your own way with the echo system. And I've just really been enjoying it. I've been kind of taking my time 
going through it. I don't want to like rush through it and then be done with it. Like I want to kind of, I don't know, savor the Zelda flavor because we don't get that many new Zelda games, right? Who knows when the next like open world 3D Zelda is going to even appear. So, um, but I'm really enjoying it. I, I like playing as Zelda. I like the puzzle solving mechanic of using the echoes. Uh, I love the graphic style. I wish it performed better on switch because it does have those like stutters and it is noticeable, but yeah. it doesn't prevent you from having a good time at the game. Anyway, I'm pretty close to the end. I think I'm like at the last stretch. I'm currently in the sort of winter ice, uh, temple right now, working my way through that. And yeah, just really enjoying it. Yeah. I didn't get very far in the game, but I enjoyed what I played. Um, are, have you been bothered with some people said it's great to play, but at times it's like your minions or your echoes to do the work for you can feel a little bit like, can you hurry up there? Can you kill the guy? Uh, do you feel that way or do you I feel do like feel it's... that way? Yeah. <laughs> I do. I definitely do. One, one tip that uh, I got from a listener of, of player one podcast, they said, spend some time just kind of exploring the world and don't like go to the next objective right away. Just explore, uncover the map. You'll find some echoes that will really, really help you that like attack immediately. Mm -hmm. So I did that and got a couple that really like you don't have to wait around for. And it hasn't been a problem since then. Well, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's almost feels like a turn based or almost like uh, your minions are going and you're like, OK, come back. Don't die all the time or Pikmin like almost in certain ways. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I was got to treat it more like an RTS. Yeah, like, you know, you're, you're just kind of like guiding things, you know, I, I attack unit over this way, attack you. But like, it's funny when mm -hmm. you mentioned the, the things that attack instantly because my son found one of those. And it's like, how am I getting schooled in a Zelda game by a four-year-old? But he found this like <laughs> spike log thing that just rolls through freaking everything. Oh, that's cool. Oh yeah. And like we so and we went on very different paths. I've talked about this on the show. And I but I I really just wanted to see how he explored this, how he treated this. And I, you know, we walked through how to like copy the echoes and all that kind of stuff. But otherwise, I just kind of like let him do his own thing. And when he found that, it was like, okay, wait, 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 hold on. I got it. Like, where did you find this? <laughs> like, how did you, how did I miss this? And yeah, but the, that, so that, that advice is so crucial to that game, depending on how you want to play it and how action oriented. But because up yeah. until then I, I was like, in my mind, it was like, okay, this is an RPS. I put my units on the ground. I sit back, I watch them do their thing. I hope they're doing it right. If they're not, I recall them and hope the next time I drop them, they're, pointed in the right direction and then my, my four-year-old finds a giant <laughs> spike roller and i'm just like oh, okay all right barbarian let's do this uh very different play right. styles i uh, do wish though that you were that. able to more directly like direct the echoes to do what you want like mm -hmm. a lot of the, the time even with the sort of quick uh attacking echoes there is kind of a lot of waiting around for them to do the thing that you want them to do or like to be able to highlight the thing that you actually want versus the thing that mm -hmm. the game thinks you want. Like oftentimes those things are not in sync and that would have been nice to see. But uh, yeah. overall, I think it's a really, really well done original Zelda game and I want more of this stuff. Like I hope they don't just stop here. I want more top down old school zelda type games and yeah i just hope they keep making them because who knows when we're gonna get the next other zelda the main the mainline zelda will it be another like five six years i gosh i hope not it is interesting because it does feel like uh the the stronger the system nintendo has the more interesting you take to get on a a a, a assist uh, on zelda because you get like all those ds games that eh, those were less i think successful but still like you know fa a phantom hourglass and and uh the the, 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 the train game spirit tracks and then you actually did get to play a spirit zelda so there is yeah. you know it's it's kind of like maybe they use this game as kind of like well we we entered into more creativity in the 2d realm but yeah. i know people are so excited about um, a link between worlds potentially coming out I mean, and maybe going to the what the uh, 
the ages games from Konami maybe could be yeah. that might that be harder Capcom because remake, yeah. remake. oh Cap uh, Capcom yeah Capcom. and maybe that's harder because it's third party and Nintendo is very cheap so they may not yeah. want to like I don't know I don't know how that works but it is cool and maybe we see them hey did you like this we're gonna take this part from this part maybe we get the next 3D Zelda and you are controlling minions maybe that's where it's like it all kind of cool comes, they try different things. Yeah, I love that. You know, it, it, when Nintendo has room to really like go crazy and be weird, that's the best Nintendo, right? Yeah. 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 It's it's pretty amazing. Um yeah, we've been seeing that with all of their franchises where we got like Mario Wonder doing some just crazy things where nobody thought they didn't think yeah. that they could reinvent 2D Mario and they definitely did after like yeah, you're making all the Mario games, but we didn't give you the ability to turn into an elephant. There you go. <laughs> so, it's it's kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I've also uh, I, been playing Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D. I don't know if you guys have been uh, playing playing this at all. We've heard about this, and I was so confused because I'm like, why are they starting with 3? And then someone, I think, mentioned, well, that's canonically the, the first game, <laughs> I think. So I'm like, okay, it is. that makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah, they made two games, and then they did a prequel and called it 3. And so the way that they're doing this sort of re-release of remakes is they're starting with 3, and then they're going to release 1 and 2 after. Okay. And man, I, I love this idea of we're going to take this old game that you, well, in Japan, that they really loved in, in America. Not not really. We didn't have the love for Dragon Quest, but uh, wait, Chris, day, I remember you know, Nintendo gave everybody a copy of Dragon Warrior with uh, Nintendo Power. So everybody loved did. it, right? <laughs> I don't think so. Let's check the trade in value on that. Uh, well, their, their game. And in fun fact, I used to play it at my neighbor. So I babysat and I'm like, this game is great. And I'm like, oh, cursed belt. It doesn't really mean it's a cursed belt, right? I'm going to put this on. And then I died. So I'm like, OK, I'm never playing this game again. They out, they out, they out, they out. <laughs> That's my famous uh, RPG story from the old days. And then you never played another RPG again. Never, never. Nope, yeah. nope. Swore it off the curse belt. <laughs> I warn everybody about the curse belt. I'm like, that's my that's my key takeaway from RPGs. <laughs> Seeing go. is believing. They they wouldn't write cursed unless it was. Although <laughs> I'll tell you, Dragon Age, I'm playing that right now, and there are a lot of traps that aren't marked traps, uh, or chests that aren't marked trapped, and they're oh. trapped. So I mean it's I've been fooled again. <laughs> fooled again. <laughs> yes. Well, I, lo I love this trend of taking a retro game like Dragon Quest uh, 3 and redoing it in the way that you probably thought in your head at the time when you were younger that it should look or this, this mm. is the vision that you had in your head. And so Dragon Quest 3 HD 2D is like this just amazing looking painterly, fantastic pixel graphic RPG that is both a modern RPG and a retro RPG at the same time. Like the battle system, very retro, you know, turn-based battles, just like back in the late 80s when this thing originally came out. But it's got the modern era quality of life fixes that we've all sort of come to love about some of the more modern RPGs like uh, auto-equip the best stuff for me or be able to save anywhere or please circle on the map where my next... <laughs> point is or being able to like change the difficulty halfway through the game like these are things that we now really love and when you put those things into a game like dragon quest 3 with this amazing amazing visual style you really get like this great package that's like half nostalgia and half like i can't believe this is like a modern rpg this is so good because it's polished and it looks great and it has voice acting, which is kind of oh, weird. Wait, have, it like, has a, voice acting? It does. Yeah, there's cinematic I had no clue. scenes where they have voice yeah. acting. And it's a little bit, it sort of brings you back to that Sega CD era where you had the 2D RPGs, but they also had voice acting. So it's still like a pixel mouth flap talking, but uh, real voices. And it's kind of cool. And just amazing music too, like actual orchestrated music. Wow. And it's just a beautiful package. It's like a it's a full priced game, so it's a sixty dollar game, but it, it's worth it because it yeah it brings you back to this moment in time. Even though I have no nostalgia for Dragon Warrior three or Dragon Dragon Quest three, 
I it 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 evokes the time, right? The mm. time when we were growing up and playing those games and what that was like. So uh highly recommended. It's it's so good. Even if you know you've may, maybe you loved RPGs in the past and you dropped off of them because modern RPGs are like doing homework. Uh this one, very easy breezy, fun, and it has the three difficulty modes. Like I said, so in the the lowest one, you can't even die. It will leave you at one HP. Wow. So that's kind of nice. <laughs> the battle of attrition. <laughs> yeah, I have not run into a cursed belt yet, but you know, if I do, <laughs> I will not put it on. I will. Not oh, please do not. If you if nice. you do, CJ, uh, you have to quit gaming forever. <laughs> okay, uh, that's okay. a deal. That's a deal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I will um, spell the cursed belt. This is like the fifth. Uh, 2d hd game right because you had uh triangle strategy one and two you had octopath traveler live alive and now this yep um are there there's gonna be two more games in the style right yeah two more dragon quest games coming out in the spring okay. uh dragon quest one and two yep uh i'm gonna ask a question what i well question or i'm gonna make a statement i would love to see this but in um more like go back to that 8-bit era but a little bit different genres too some uh, like action rpgs i think mm-hmm. of like you know even like the legend of zelda if they've talked about ever going back to the original legend of zelda don't have to go all hd water but if you do something like really cool like that inspired that'd be amazing or totally. castlevania even like the early castlevania games would look amazing in that style mm-hmm. Yeah, I think they would look awesome. And I'd I'd love to even see, you know, do a Super Mario All-Stars sort of thing where you make oh, the yeah. the old Mario games look like this, where it's just mm-hmm. teeming with life and it's so vibrant and it would be awesome. I would love yeah. that. I would love uh I mean like, you know, I appreciated what they tried or what they did with like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, Let's Go mm-hmm. Eevee, but seeing even if they wanted to skip the first generation seeing gold and silver in this kind of art style really evoking some of that original pokemon artwork yeah hand-drawn pokemon artwork i think would be so incredible and like like you said like teeming with life this this vibrant world and and take some of those newer things of like some of the pokemon actually appearing on the overworld and that kind of stuff um or at least like you can kind of see them flitting through trees and tall grass and that kind of stuff uh before you enter it i think would be just magical that'd be Uh, killer yeah 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 (laughs) it kind of reminds me i remember the 3ds where there was those classics they had the 3D mode, like Kid Icarus and so Oh, yeah. Those were really fun things. and neat and cool. There's even some VR uh, engines. I can't remember what the engine is in VR, where it takes classic games. Yeah. However, you will find those games. But takes them in VR so you can actually play sideways with them and play with the dimensionality. Oh, cool. It is yeah, yeah, really yeah. cool. There's a, there's something on Quest, Mark. I can point you in the right direction if you ever okay. it out. Right, yeah. I think you'd love it. Yeah, I just, I just think there's so many ways to play with those 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 original artwork that's amazing in the gameplay but really yeah. do some cool things with it there's some people on social media that do this kind of thing where it's like they re-envision a classic game with like hd fied visuals and they always look awesome i always throw them a like whenever i see them mm-hmm. on my timeline uh i just want to see more of this this type of thing yeah be great yeah i remember there was a uh, someone did a I can't remember the name of the game, but it was basically a first person Legend of Zelda, but with mm. the Legend of Zelda artwork. And it was neat. I thought it was just really cool to see you doing that from that like Link's perspective. Uh, yeah, it was great. And, the, and I, I will give one more pitch for 3D, uh, 3D dot game hero on the PS3. Mm. That oh, yeah. was taking awesome. voxel pixel art. Yeah. With, and it's trapped on the PS3. I don't know why. That's from From Software, I believe. Oh. Who did it? So oh. it's a weird, it's a weird game, but oh well. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Love it, CJ. Thank you so much for that. Yeah. I I I will hope to get back to Zelda Echoes of Wisdom. You should. 
It depends when you stopped, but I, I think it gets better as it goes I'm on. I'm very early. I am very uh, early is oh. the best way to say it. So, yeah, so I'm very early. I, I think after the first time, I'm like, oh, I got to talk to people. I don't want to talk to people. I just want to go out and explore the world. But it's just. Well, me. you should do that. You should do that and get as many echoes and then go uh, talk to people and do your quests or whatever. That's true. I yeah. guess I got to do that. Mm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, Mark, what have you been playing? I've been playing a mix of things and I'm going to touch on a few pretty quickly. Uh, I had to throw a mention in here to Pac-Man World Repack. Mm. Um, My son just stumbled upon this game and is suddenly obsessed with Pac-Man. And we talked so much about like retro games and that kind of stuff earlier on and, and, and old school arcade games. Look at the Pac-Man love. It's going straight (laughs) through multiple, uh, multiple years multiple fandoms and generations todd what did you just you just brought some kind of so i got this from i got this from namco so mark you can actually get this for super cheap it's a collector's edition with superman repack comes with this awesome like metal pac-man with ghosts and it opens up and there's like a a a pac-man inside it so it's like a mecha beast wow so i know what you're talking about and he just fell sorry pac-man yeah (laughs) We uh, we tried a demo for this one and he fell in love with that. So I said, okay, well, let's get the full game. Uh, it went on sale for like stupidly cheap on Switch. So it was a, a kind of a no brainer. And he's been absolutely loving that. And I've played a bit of it myself as well. Um, so just talking about, you know, early arcade games and all that kind of stuff uh, earlier kind of made me think of that one. Uh, but I've personally, aside from playing just with my son, uh, have been putting more time into Mario and Luigi Brothership which uh, coming off of my replay of uh, Superstar Saga on my, my Game Boy um, SP thing, Ambernick uh, device, um, I, I'm absolutely loving, it, you know, some of the things um, I, I get where some of the complaints are, but for the most part, I'm having a really good time with it and, uh, and really enjoying, you know, the, the, kind of upgrade in visuals, obviously from a Game Boy Advance game. Um, some of the jokes are a little repeaty, but like, I think it's one of those times where for some of the Mario and Luigi games, I think some people hold those in a, a, a really high regard for nostalgia's sake. Um, and then they come to this a little bit more mature and the jokes are still aimed at kids. Uh, so when you were a kid playing Superstar Saga or one of the other games inside story or whatever, those, those jokes absolutely slapped. And now that you're a little bit older and maybe like writing for review sites or doing whatever, um, and you play this game and you're expecting it to live up to those childhood memories, kind of like, like CJ said, like this, you know, Mm. you, you get those games that feel like the games felt in your mind. I think that might be the case with some of the reviews I've seen for this because I came to the super, uh, the, the, the Mario and Luigi games later in life. I missed those on handhelds, uh, when I was younger. So I played all of those where I always thought the jokes were corny. I always thought, you know, some of the writing was like a little like, Oh, okay. I, I see what they're doing here. And it's like goofy. And I enjoy that. Um, and I'm not saying this one's like better or worse than any of them. I find like so far from what I've seen and played, it's like, yeah, okay, cool. That's the level of corniness I kind of expect from a Mario and Luigi game. And, um, and Brothership's kind of fun so far. Um, so I'm enjoying it. Um, another one we've been playing, uh, my, my son's obsession with Kirby continues. So I picked up Kirby's Return to Dreamland. Oh my God, oh. Mark. This is like a flashback to when my son was a kid on the Wii. He loved this game. Yeah. Huh. Uh, I just, I needed to play something other than, um, what's the, uh, the the newest Kirby game? The Dream Course? The, or, uh, the, um, no, uh, the one where it's the 3D World uh, Kirby yeah. game, right? I yes. love that game too. That's a fantastic yeah. game. Yeah, it's a great game. It's an amazing game, but I've beaten it four or five times. <laughs> okay, so it's time for it. like a new Kirby game in the house. Uh, yeah. So he, it was between this one and Star Allies, and I let him choose. Uh, um, he picked the right one. Yeah, 
yeah, for sure. We've played the demos. Um, yeah, this this game's fantastic. We've been playing the whole thing through um, two player co op mode. I think we're on world four now. Um, it's it's fantastic. It's 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 really really good. I love that you can, as a second player, just kind of like drop in and drop out. Um, and every once in a while, he'll want to be first player, and it's like, dude, this is a little bit tough. Can I please take over first player? Because second player can die all they want doesn't matter they always just pop right back and that's great when you're playing with a four-year-old if he's that player but when it's the first player and he's just like hey what does this void to nothingness do and it's like well that kills you instantly but let's start at the beginning of the stage cool um then it you know but anyway we've been we've been making our way through and it's been a lot of fun so i think you made a really really good choice with that one uh, um, the most epic part of that game mark is when kirby gets his like sword and it like takes up the whole stage Dude, those super, whatever it is, the super powers or whatever. So good. The fire one where you just send a dragon flying through all the enemies on stage uh, and some of them, you know, pop up to the, the front of the screen. Um, again, it, it, where CJ mentioned uh, Double Dragon earlier. Um, totally reminds me of Battletoads Double Dragon where you can, or like the Ninja Turtles and that kind of stuff where you can like hit an enemy so hard they fly at the screen. Um, all those old school games. Um that, that I used to absolutely love. Um, and, and this is, yeah, bringing, bringing those back. And I, I missed return to dreamland on Wii. The Wii. It was on, it Wii, was right? on the Wii. Yeah. yeah. So a game I've completely missed up until this point. So very, very happy to, to return mm. to it. Um, there and, was some good and, Kirby uh, games on the 3ds. Also, if you, if Robobot? you're looking for another oh, yeah. one, find a Robobot. Planet Robobot was yeah. excellent. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Oh yeah, we've we've been through all the Kirby games. There's oh, so good. much Kirby in my house. Uh, <laughs> the, the 3DS. Um, I need a new 3DS battery for for uh, my my new 3DS uh, because that one has has seen some some work. Um, yeah, yeah, I've I've played a lot of Kirby uh, <laughs> recently. <laughs> recently, uh, um, my whew. my kids just my kids just absolutely obsessed. Actually, the con that we went to a couple of weeks ago, I got a new. Um, like knitted plush Kirby that he just needed. Um, oh, yeah. Nice. So yeah, more more physical Kirby and uh, Kirby games. Uh, it's it's all over the place, um, which is like, it's really cool because that's one series that like I'd see and every once in a while I'd pick something up, but like big blind spot for me for like Nintendo first party games um mm. that i just for whatever reason like missed a whole lot of the series and it's really cool having this uh tiny goblin that lives in my house that's like i need a new kirby game um so it's it's just great well um, kirby had a curse right oh at the end yes. of the nintendo system released the kirby <laughs> so yeah. it got a bad rep that. right so, but like canvas curse uh rainbow the the one yes. where you drew with Draw. The, the ds those games were awesome. Some of my favorites for the DS 3DS era, um, but like proper Kirby games for some reason, when they weren't doing some really weird shit, like making them out of like uh, yarn or clay or whatever. Oh, Epic like, Yarn was amazing. Yarn's I great. loved Epic Yarn. Awesome. Yeah. Um, but when they weren't doing some weird gimmick thing with Kirby, for some reason, I missed it. Yeah. So like I yeah. played all those like experimental strange Kirby games and then missed like the core franchise. So like, Mm. Hit and return to dreamland is like, yeah, okay. I see why this franchise is where it is. Um, so really, really happy to be playing that one. And then finally you mentioned, I was going to be talking about VR. Yes, I am selling my quest Two. So if anyone locally, or, I mean, if you want to pay for shipping, you can have my quest Two. We'll talk I saw about Joey it. Ferris is doing um, the same thing. Is he? Okay. Yeah. I uh, saw yeah, he, he is too. Three, two. Anybody want um, to buy quest one? It's very sexy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Um, so yeah, I was very happy. I saw the the price, I don't know, Black Friday offers or whatever it was, a price drop for the the Quest 3S, and uh, there were some some offers for it. Um, so I said, you know what, screw it, let's let's go. I went all in on Meta stuff uh, in the last couple of weeks. I got the Meta Ray Ban glasses. I got the Quest 3S. Uh, Zuckerberg just owns. Did he send you a thank you? Now. He I said like, yeah. thank you, Mark. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I can teach you Taekwondo or karate. Uh, yeah. High <laughs> MMA. Five the next meeting of the marks. Um, well, yeah. Anyway, it's, I'm, I'm 
really loving the three S. Um, I, I had mentioned before to CJ, like I think if I had have tried a Quest three with the pancake lens and and seeing all the benefits that that system has, I don't know if I'd be able to go back. So going <laughs> just with the Quest three S is a very calculated move on my part because I knew it was kind of an incremental jump, but at least I'd be able to play Batman and some of my games would look prettier. It's the Um, same hardware as the three, but just not the lenses. So that's right. should be good for a while. Right. I mean, that's a good thing. It's kind of like the life. You're not feeling like you're going to be shorted. Like I felt like I was shorted with the quest one because it was like, here's a quest one. Ah, just kidding. Here's quest two. It's much better. (laughs) And I I have to tell you that like the the AR stuff is so cool. So worth the upgrade. Um, so even just like the built in, like the first encounters where the fuzzy little alien thingies were like bursting through my physical walls of my house and through the ceiling and leaving debris on the floor <laughs> in an accurate way, like that it actually hit the floor and like interact with stuff was just blowing my mind. And uh, even even as much as like the overlay of the guns mm-hmm. that you blast these little things with over my hands in a really seamless and perfect way that tracked incredibly well um was such a great showcase for it i also really enjoyed my my wife's been playing through uh breath of the wild again and i really enjoy being able to sit with her and she was playing on the tv the other day so i just tossed a screen up in the living room still passed through and played my xbox uh oh wow Oh, okay. Through Game Pass. Uh, so it was, oh, it was that's great. great. I was just playing Fortnite on this screen in the living room, floating next to our actual TV. So I could still see what she was doing in Breath of the Wild and interact with her sitting on the couch next to me. But I still, I was actively playing Fortnite. Uh, and it was it was such a surreal experience like with a, an actual Xbox controller, but like having this 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 weird floating curved display static in my living room i i cannot get over how good it is just keeping position because i could look at her and turn back and the screen is exactly where it was pinned to my living room um it is it is super impressive i got a pro tip for you mark uh you know how apple uh vision pro has the eyes I think you should get like those googly eyes <laughs> and put them right on the quest. So Loren thinks it's you. She's like, honey, you're looking at there me you and you go up and down. And like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, <laughs> it's just like, I'm looking at Mark. <laughs> I think that's going to happen. I'm going to take a trip to Michael's this week and, and get some, some giant googly eyes. Cause I don't think I can go small with this. I think no, I need no. some like real big, like it anime, shows you have real motion and you're really engaged. That, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, That's right. I think that needs to happen. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm really, but uh, yeah, how is Batman honest, though, Mark? I haven't played Batman. <laughs> oh, you very, oh, okay, oh sure, I've very been late. so obsessed with like the AR stuff that I haven't jumped into Batman yet. That's I'm playing with the box, Todd. I opened the box and the box is awesome. I, <laughs> I, okay. In, in my defense, it's Monday okay. and I picked the thing up. Uh, is it Saturday, Saturday okay. night. Okay. So it was, yeah. you know, um, yeah, so I, I basically had yesterday to play with it, okay. really. Set it up Saturday night, transferred okay. my stuff, downloaded all the games. So the next episode, we will hear all about, I'm Batman. I, yeah, <laughs> will 100% be Batman, or I will not be Batman, and I will be uh, Alfred instead, and have been oh. cleaning up Batman's puke, because uh, okay. we'll see if the motion sickness gets okay. me. I don't uh, think it will. Um, um We'll see. You had a quest two so. before, though, right? Like, yeah. Did you have problems yeah. with motion sickness with that? Uh, not usually. Not usually. Okay. Not usually. Um, what about the AC Creed game, Mark? You played the Assassin's Creed game, right? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, you play didn't. That. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, Ubisoft uh, said they were going to send a code for that, and they didn't. And then I forgot to pick it up, and uh, here we are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> full disclosure: that's uh, that's my Assassin's Creed VR story. Um, most of the time I'm fine in VR. I've played several games where there is that kind of motion or you're moving or warping. There was one where I really felt queasy and I can't remember which game that was, but I it was like, 
shoot, I'm going to have to go through my, my library and figure yeah. out which, what, what it was, but um, I don't think so. I'm usually pretty good with motion sickness, but I, I said like, that was kind of the joke with uh, with my wife about this one is like, I can't wait to play this Batman game. I'm buying this because for, you know, a big reason of it is so I can play this Batman game VR and watch. This is the one game that makes me sick. Uh, <laughs> so do you said, bring uh, me my back, my bat bucket, Alfred, my, my bat bucket. 100%. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, um, I mean, the good thing is that now like modern VR games have comfort modes that mm-hmm, you, yeah, can really like toggle like a vignette effect to really yeah. like help with that. So you, yeah. it may be fine. I, you yeah. know, I think Batman probably has enough comfort things where you'll be fine. I think so. I, uh, I, I'm playing it up for comic effect, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think I'll be all right. Well, plus um, you probably got uh, three months of MetaQuest Plus in your new purchase, right? Nice. So you can download all those games that are on there, which by the way, Tetris effect connected by enhanced the company I worked for, yes. for is on okay. that's Meta a- quest plus. So download that and try that. You'll have mm-hmm. a whale in front of your face. Oh, I you yeah. yeah. I've, I've, I've never played done that in VR. VR. I, I, I played it just it, real. I mean, it was, VR. it was so crazy. Just in reality, VR, yeah. My brain yeah. will be going out my ears. It's, it's that, great in VR and it's on Quest yeah. Plus. Yeah, so that's yeah, amazing. That, that game is insane in VR. Um, that is one that I have played. Um, so, so good. And I have to check out Humanity now that you mentioned it. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember oh, seeing yeah, that yeah. game, but I'm definitely going to have to. Well, because the, the library just goes, which is great. Yeah. Which is amazing. Um, and I know you're not a PC guy, Mark, but if, you know, you have the, the, the game, the, you know, the, having Game Pass on there is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, especially now where the Game Pass doing the play your own games thing. Yeah, that's it was so great. cool to see some of my library on there. Yeah, as well as the just the Game Pass games. So I did also play um, Jedi Survivor. Uh, jumped nice. in a little bit of that one, and it was just like, oh man, this this is so good. Just again, this floating screen in my living room uh, that, that was just blowing my mind. So um, whole bunch of fun with the Quest 3s and more to come for sure. Um, Todd. Well, I was just going to ask really with CJ because, you know, is the perks of working for a VR company, you get like all the gear? I mean, are you getting like, <laughs> like, like the, right. the weirdest like PC VR where it's like it costs eighteen thousand dollars. There's a bodysuit involved. There's a track thing that you have, so you're like in a, a hamster wheel. Do you do you, do you get all the gear to try out oh, the no, games and experience not. it? Oh, okay, not. great. So <laughs> you're not making this very attractive, CJ. <laughs> no, no. I mean, yeah, I, I bought my own VR headsets, so mm. uh, yeah. Okay, I, I and what do you what do you currently I have? I have a Quest Three. Okay. Yeah, those pancake uh, lenses. You are absolutely right. Once you experience that, you're, you're yeah. not going back. I had, I had to laugh. Luke <laughs> yeah. Lore got gifted a 3S. Yeah. He actually could to try out Batman and give a review. He mm-hmm. gave that away to a friend who's a veteran, and he bought a 3. So oh, it's nice. like the circle of life yeah. is crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, it's it's kind of how it's kind of crazy how that all works. Um, and then I just saw that talking about Black Friday deals. PSVR 2 is going to be like $375. Comes with Horizon. And now that it works with PC, that's Ooh, yeah. not a bad deal if you need it's a headset bad, yeah. for, for PC too, right? Oh, so That really, it, it hurts my heart because PSVR 2, let me tell you, is is so nice. It's it's really good. And uh, the especially the haptics in the headset are yes. such a nice like you feel it. thing. feel it can yeah. feel it and the eye tracking is so cool like once you experience that it's like i don't want vr to be any other way but uh man it breaks my heart that sony the, and and just in general the support and also i think players just didn't didn't want it for whatever reason uh i mean vr gaming in general is kind of this like separate thing almost like mobile gaming right you're either into it or you know nothing about it and there are so many games that are awesome in vr but if you're not in that space you don't know what they are because they're not like you get very few that are horizon or like any other console level uh franchises that you will lure you over but then there's like Walk about golf and let, uh, Dungeons of Eternity and all these like Demio game. people Demio, love Demio yes. being you know yeah. dro- dropping your characters and having them do a basically a D and D game right in front of you. 
Yeah, and Moss and all these games. Oh, like Star Moss. Trek. Star Trek. Uh, was it? Uh, Bridge Crew. Bridge Crew. Yeah. I mean, Moss so one good. and two, just like a reason yeah. to buy VR alone. Yeah. If that's the oh, yeah. only thing you play, and like toss in a couple, like you said, like walkabout mini golf and a couple of other those like fun little like like we esque kind of games. Yeah. Um, but like, oh man, Moss and Moss two are so effing good like i'm thinking about playing moss one again because i've heard it's enhanced for the the three it is yeah they okay. did both of both of them are both upgraded them? Yeah. yeah okay i need to play through that series again yeah, the, yeah i sure. think the biggest problem with playstation vr to vr2 they cut off the library that was such a huge challenge because you're like well all my games will travel with me and like the new the old iron man game will come over and that came out to quest and it's just it just it just i hope there's a little bit more camaraderie and, and sharing in VR because I've always yeah. said if, if yeah. Xbox wanted to open up their relationship and just really build that with Xbox, I mean, the, it's been so happy to have Steam Link work with Quest openly and to have Xbox yeah. do the same thing. That would be amazing. Yeah. 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 Very good. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, Target has a Black Friday deal on the Quest 3S. Uh, you get a $75 Target gift card. So I may be jumping in on that because I, uh-huh. I just need something. I need the nudge. And it's like, honey, you can buy like things. I'm giving you $75. Exactly. There's, it's like, why wouldn't I do this? We're losing one, money uh, if I don't do this. There's one directly through Meta. I got an email about it today, which of course is like two days after I bought the frigging thing at Best Buy. Um, not complaining. Though. I got a great deal on like an elite strap and everything else too. Uh, but uh, apparently if you buy it straight through meta, you get a hundred dollar store credit as well uh, on top of Batman and the three month uh, quest plus trial. That's amazing. So a hundred last time I checked is more than 75. Yeah. Yeah. You, you made the, the, the mortal method. sin of buying anything that you need in October. Wait until the last week of November. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Uh, okay. For myself, uh, I continue to play dragon age, the veil guard. Um, I know people are upset about this game, but I'm not. I'm loving it. Um, uh, my biggest conundrum is who to romance. Um, I think I might have gotten a couple people's their hopes up. And like, no, no, I'm taking that back. Uh, I don't know if it's going to matter. Like, I like they find like there's going to be like the weird like sitcom where it's like, wait, we're all on a date together and I've got to go like entertain the dates throughout the night. I don't know. No, I, I don't want it. That would be amazing, like the awkward. Uh, I gotta go to the bathroom, or I gotta take a call. But there aren't cell phones in our age. Well, there are now because I need a call. Um, it's it's been amazing. I love it so much. It reminds me so much of Mass Effect with companion quests, which I'm I'm completely in right now. And I'm like, this is amazing. You can pe- give your companion gifts, which is amazing too. It's like to make their area spruce up. You can decorate your place. Um, I love it. I, I think it's amazing. I'm just loving it. I'm like 24 hours in. I know I've got so much more to do, but I'm, I'm just really embracing it. And I like the fact that the way it tells its story is not just through the awkward cutscenes. It's also building lore through different areas. So, um, and I'm just enjoying my character and how you can build your companions out, go on missions together, um, get some more, um, camaraderie through it but also figure out how they play together because one of the big things is the synergy effects between like oh you do this effect this pairs well with this effect and then it does something really cool so i'm really enjoying it quite a bit so it's pretty awesome i don't know how long the game is but i'm just gonna let it go i'm just gonna enjoy it because i don't get this bioware does what games out very often folks so i'm gonna enjoy it while it lasts because after this mass effect four in 2027 nobody knows, nobody knows. <laughs> just long for ride something that i missed out on to talk about during uh you know shocktober was this little guy i don't know if you can see it the mm. retro realms halloween evil dead collection which they released which was really fun so it's basically two franchises together I got like the the collector's edition, special edition. It looks like a VHS tape, which is so great. Um, but it also came with a Michael Myers plushie, <laughs> which I'm like, ah! I hope it doesn't actually come alive and kill me, but that's okay. But the games are so much fun because they're like 16-bit. They're done by Way Forward, which Way Forward, 
I don't know how Nintendo has not bought them. They are amazing. <laughs> the gameplay is amazing. It does like this mix of the real world. And if you move like this device, it takes you into like the zombie world or the demon world. It's great. The campaigns are essentially the same, whether you are like Michael Myers, but they have different quests. You can play Laurie Stroud. There are other, and there's even collectible cards that you can use this. It's amazing. It's a lot of fun. Uh, wow. At times it's very hard, but it's that 16 bit like feel, but with way forward's care, Mark knows way forward. Cause he loves the Shantae games. I've loved all oh, yeah. of their games. Mummy remastered. I mean, they are such a gem of a, of a developer that I just hope they keep doing things like this. I want like other franchises from my youth. Like I want to escape from LA. I want a big trouble in little China game, <sighs> whatever it takes, please make those happen. Um, I'm going to ask you guys really quickly. If you could get one weird like franchise you love as a 16 bit that way forward could direct, what would you make them do? Uh, Jaws, NES Jaws. Or, or oh, just, the NES Jaws re, game. <laughs> redo NES Jaws as a good game. How about, how about the Friday the 13th game or on the for, NES? I mean, that's the easy where you're answer, throwing, right? Where you're throwing <laughs> stones at, <laughs> at yes. Jason's like, what am I even doing here? Mark, what is it? Uh, Goonies. Oh, well, there was, oh, yeah, there, there, there was, there was the Goonies a Goonies 2. Goonies 2. Yeah, that was the, the game the that they released. Yeah. There's like the sequel to Goonies that they released. Yeah, um, it happened. So like toss that in as a bonus material, but I want I want them to like take like this is the Goonies game that should have been released back in the day. Yes. A few modern en en enhancements and everything, but otherwise you're just like playing through the movie as you would like a good franchise tie-in game back in the day. Um, I think that'd be a lot of fun. I can't wait to yeah. take on Mama Fratelli in that boss level. Yes. <laughs> She's just tossing so her, her sons at you. <laughs> Go get them, boys. I love that. Oh, boy. Love it. Uh, and lastly, I played the Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster. So once again, spooky time coming back. Um, this is a love letter to Dead Rising 1 uh, on the 360. And... They have completely remastered this game from graphics, controls, modern things. What they didn't really change was the mission structure, the uh, the mapping, how you get to things, and some of the awkward dialogue, which is like, I said something. I'm waiting some, for someone to react to it, and they finally do. Some of the awkward uh, Capcom. Capcom struggled in the early 360 days with some of their, like, uh, dialogue and things like that. Well, you know, they have for a long time, but this game definitely feels like it's from that. It's like the 2D HD uh, game that we just talked about, where the only thing that didn't really change was the narrative and some of the the way pathing and things like that. Um, but it looks great, plays great, um, but they still keep the, like the time, uh, the time based missions in there. You could lose f people they have to rescue. But if you're really wanting to get back into it, or you maybe you missed it in the 360 and you don't want to play that original version, this is a great way to play uh, this game. It looks great and plays great. Camera is kind of interesting where you're taking pictures again, so it kind of feels like Pokemon, oh no, go. Like, oh no, the Pokemon <laughs> are going to kill me. And you get graded and you get points for your pictures. So that's kind of fun. And I am uh, pleased to know that Frank West can be bald. So that's what I chose. Well, there you go. Excellent. I feel included. Nice. Inclusiveness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. More more bald people <laughs> in video games, please. He just needs yes. to be like five foot four, though, and then I'll feel completely uh, <laughs> included in the conversation. Mm. Yeah. Now, did you play yeah. this game back in the day, and what did you think of the uh, the save system and the sort of uh, die and retry sort of system that uh, Dead Rising has going? I did, and I found that very frustrating uh, back in the day. Uh, so for me, it was like I actually glommed on to back into Dead uh, the Dead Rising games with three and beyond. Okay. It just went like we're throwing that out. We're just gonna make it a wacky, weird. Uh, we're gonna make a mini game with the like uh, mini golf in these games. We're gonna go full on Capcom versus whatever a 3D Ultra Mix edition. Uh, I like that version, but I loved going back to try this out to see if the the, the time-based missions were going to drive me nuts. But I think I still love it that the mm. very beginning of the game, the reason why things went to hell was an old woman wanted her dog, 
and she was going to condemn everybody to hell so she get her dog and she ended up dying anyways and the poodle went to enter into a zombie so you know that's right lessons were not learned uh, they were not no they were no, not never. no not at all well uh that wraps up what we've been gaming but before we do that please check out this wonderful ad that patreons don't have to listen to hey secret friends unite let me tell you about zencaster we use them for our show, and now they're supporting us. Zencaster is now the all-in-one solution making podcasting easy. It's the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. It provides high-quality audio and video podcast production and hosting. With a full suite of professional tools, podcasters can seamlessly record, produce, and publish studio-quality content all from one dashboard. Being a creator has never been easier. And we chose Zencaster because of the ease of use, uh, high quality output, and we it makes it super easy for our guests to come on. Uh, we had multiple solutions we tried before, and Zencaster has just been the best fit for us. Why Zencaster? It's now super easy to record a podcast with Zencaster. Log in using your browser and start recording a high quality podcast right away. Record studio quality sounds and up to 4K video with your guests. Feel a sense of Zen knowing Zencaster's multi-layered backups ensure you always have your recordings in the highest quality, even if the connection is unstable. Have you ever worried what you sound like? Zencaster's post-production process makes you sound buttery smooth. It automatically removes those ums and ahs in your recording. It removes those awkward pauses in conversation too. Set the right podcast loudness and levels while reducing background noise with the click of a button. So if you're interested in making an easy, high-quality podcast just with the click of a browser button, go to Zencaster.com slash pricing and use my code SFU1. You'll get 30% off your first month of any Zencaster paid plan. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. Now back to the show. Now we get into the bonus round. So... I know that a lot of people are probably tired about all of the <sighs> discussion about the Game Awards and their categories that just came out and why it's frustrating for many people because certain games got didn't get their, their flowers, certain games are getting their flowers again, and it's a, it's a little bit um, challenging at times. When we talk about the world of games and, and, and award shows, there's many out there, the Dice Awards, BAFTAs, uh, there's many others too. Uh, and one of the first Game of the Year awards, which already happened, which is just crazy because it seems so early, is the Golden Joystick Awards. It's been around for 40 plus years from, uh, I believe, one of the, the primary media companies, uh, which is, I'm blanking on the name of the media company, but they do a lot of the uh, the traditional media websites, plus also uh, journalism. Is it not forward? I can't remember. But, Future? Uh, yes, Future Games. So, uh, and they, they actually, uh, Ben Starr hosted it. It was, looked pretty cool. Um, but the funny part is they they basically start their, basically get their categories together in October, and then they they, they, they change it out. So it's, it's, it's 12 months rolling. But still, if a game came out in November, it really doesn't get an opportunity to really be included, especially if you need to review it. So, uh, but they are primarily a fan-based weighted uh, award show, and their categories are really unique. They do have a DLC category. Uh, they actually have a hardware, like best hardware award. So they go really deep into different categories that are really different than what we do. So some people have glommed on that they like that because mm -hmm. it's not really tied to like media critics and things like that. There is a board that kind of oversees kind of things and puts them together in regards to that. So it's not like 85 million games. They kind of put together kind of like what should be uh, supported in nominations. So um, at this point, I I'm just trying to think, um, CJ, have you actually paid attention to the Golden Joystick Awards? Because I didn't realize how old it was. Uh, I have. Yeah. On the, on the working for a publisher, you do kind of pay attention to all of the various awards that come around. So yeah, I have been paying attention to the, to the uh, golden joysticks. Cause yeah, humanity and, and just, was, uh, no, was nominated for a golden. There you go. You, so. you gotta know. You go. I mean, and you gotta toot your own horn when you actually win or you're oh, nominated and, and share because getting nominated is just half the battle. Right. I mean, it's true. How many VR games have not? 
got or or puzzle based games didn't get award. So I'll just go through this really quick. Best audio design, Astrobot. Best soundtrack, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Best storytelling, same game. Best multiplayer game, Helldivers Two. Best visual design, Black Myth Wukong. Uh, and I will say, Black Myth Wukong. You'll hear about this game a lot because it is a Chinese based mythology, um, and it is really one of their first big games that got represented. So China being involved is pretty big because when fans get involved, there are more Chinese people than anywhere else in the world. So that can really change our perspective on, on what happens. Mm. Um, best indie game, Bellatro, uh, which is great because it was on consoles. I just bought it on Google play uh, for, for on, on mobile right now, Google play, you get like, like 30% off or something a game. So I used my code. Uh, it was part of Black Friday to get that. So I'm really going to really give that my best because I tried it on console. I'm like, this is a mobile game for me. So very excited for that. Mm, yeah. uh, best indie game, self-published, another Crab's Treasure. Very fun game. My son loved that. It's like a Souls-like with crabs. Very cool. Uh, Studio of the Year, Team Asobi with Astrobot. Best lead performer, uh, Cody Christian. Do you want me to go keep going through all these? I'll, I'll, I'll pick out a category that seems interesting. Breakthrough Award. Critics' Choice. I like that category. So basically, it's a a game that kind of took everybody by storm, but may not capture everyone's imagination when it's facing off against huge games. And that's Bellatro. Mm -hmm. Still playing Award. That's kind of cool. Minecraft. Still playing Award. Mobile. Honkai. Star Rail. They separate PC game from console game of the year. So we Mm -hmm. had Satisfactory and Helldivers 2. Most wanted, so most anticipated once again. But then there's a Critics' Choice Award. So the critics do get a voice in this, and that's Helldivers 2. But then they have Expansion, which uh, happened, which Elden Ring, shout out to Erdry. Best Gaming Hardware. Best Early Access Game. And Hardware was Steam Deck OLED. Uh, Lethal Company. I know this game got so much buzz. and was was, but So it's kind of cool that a game that gets some notoriety early on, gets, that basically gets some flowers, because those games get so easily forgotten it's true Mm -hmm. um best game trailer that's a very weird award (laughs) uh streamers choice award chained together i don't know what that game is it's a platformer uh i don't know if you've have you heard of the game only up do you know what yes uh yep i basically just go keep going up and yep. it's like weird and strange. Yes. So this is basically only up, but for two players and they are chained together, <sighs> like the title of the game says, and you have to make the jumps and do the timing all together, of course, sort of synchronized, right? Otherwise, oh. the other person will fall off and drag you down with them. And it's uh, it, it's a lot of fun to watch on Twitch and not surprised that it got this award. Yeah. Uh, play that with your spouses. They'll love that. <laughs> It'll lead to good so. nights. It's no. like, uh, what, what's the read, game uh, where you're making fantastic food? overcooked? Uh, overcooked. Yes, it's uh, overcooked. Yeah, the game. Oh, yeah. It's ended relationships. Uh, best game, mm-hmm. game adaptation of course. Uh The one that's weird is they, they call it the ultimate game of the year, which mm-hmm. makes it just, I love that ultimate uh, Black Myth Wukong. So that's interesting how they do it and it's already happened and they do uh knock they basically cut off their nominations in october and they basically do the rolling 12 so that is the golden joystick there'll be many more awards um with player one podcast cj when you when you approach like uh you know recognizing games do you feel like you know a static process after 18 years you feel like it's always changing uh, it has been a static process for maybe 16 of the last 18 years. Yeah. Yes. Uh, because nowadays, I don't know about you guys, but games often, uh, go outside of their release year for, for me and my co-hosts. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, the DLC for some games, you play it in a different year than the game came out. And then you're all about that game again. And, uh, yeah, I, I kind of, I kind of get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or like, you, you know, you, sometimes there's, you know, that the game's going to have DLC, you wait for a sale, you play it when the DLC came out, but for the first time. So you're experiencing the game plus the DLC. Yeah months later or a year later than everyone else who jumped on the game super early. Uh, and I know that's the, the, 
the the state I'm at with Star Wars Outlaws right now. I was talking to a friend mm-hmm. earlier who was uh, ranting and raving about Outlaws, and I still haven't picked it up. I know the first DLC just dropped, and I know it's on sale for Black Friday, but I spent some other money this week. Um, but it was that kind of discussion of like, I guess that's not going to be in my game of the year discussion because I'm probably going to wait for after Christmas sales to, yeah, yeah. to pick that one up, and it'll be you know, the first DLC will have dropped. The second DLC will be closer. The game just got a big gameplay patch. Like, so it's, it's tough to consider those for, yeah, for game of the year or for any kind of award. Well, but then if you start playing it next year and you really like it enough, could it be your game of the year 2025? But it didn't come out in 2025. You played it then. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's a very different landscape now, I think, because yeah. games don't age as much as they used to, right? And they get remastered, yeah. or they get brought back, they get remaked, uh, or they continue to get support. Uh, I am yeah. thinking of like, a, what is it, Stardew Valley? Yeah, that guy keeps the yeah. or or think of like No Man's Sky. Oh, that game yeah. keeps getting better every year, so it's like, yeah. Uh, and and when Fortnite continues to be evolving every year, and, and Mark is a huge Fortnite fan, so it's very hard to say. It's almost like you almost have to define it's like best product of twenty of the year it is, but then also maybe the game you love the most in the year you played it is valid yeah. as well. Because yeah. Yeah. I hate to think that games get forgotten. <laughs> you know the year after that they're released because they 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 don't feel like for me it was cyberpunk 2077 mm-hmm. liberty city um i've always said oh i'm gonna wait until i can play that my pc sucked i'm gonna wait till it gets better so i waited till this i kept on waiting because i'm like i want it to play it the best that it is and then i finally started playing that but i'm like i accidentally started the liberty city dlc and i wasn't supposed oh, to i said i wasn't going to and i'm like i love this it's the best thing ever but i'm like it didn't count because it wasn't so these arbitrary rules we put out there just really kind of hurt us in a way it, of just enjoying what we like and, and celebrating so the games tough. we love. It can be so tough as well. Yeah. Even like, again, take Star Wars Outlaws, a game that came out this year, uh, got kind of lambasted for some of the stealth missions early on. So Todd, let's pretend that you played that at launch. You didn't like the stealth missions. You left the game, gave it a terrible score not for you, whatever it is, it's patched now with those stealth missions kind of uh, taken into account, addressed. Um, There's ways around them. There's ways if you don't feel like doing stealth, you can just brute your way through these things, go in guns blazing, Han Solo style. So if I played that game now, we're still in the same year that this was released. This isn't even me playing in 25 but it could be a very different vibe to the game. I might stick with it where I'm not approaching it as a stealth game that I usually don't like very much. Uh, I'm approaching it as a Han Solo simulator that even barring any DLC or anything, we're playing at least slightly different games, but potentially slightly different enough that they're very different experiences. So then do you go back and play this game again? Or do we just have very different opinions based on the patch leveling? And again, this is still within that same release year that it could be like, oh, this is my game of the year. I really loved how this happened. And you're like, what the hell game did you play? You know, like <laughs> that happens. Or because of the publisher, you say, well, I'll just wait because they always discount their games. So oh, yeah. a lot of the audience yeah. is just not even going to experience because they'll wait until january february and it's now 60 percent off so that's a that's a big challenge so that's that's frustrating the other part that's always frustrating too is a lot of game awards happen before the year's done yeah. so it's almost like 2020 can you even call it 2024 you kind of should just call it our game awards the 20th edition or whatever because then at least you know that we covered this period of time because how often is a game that got released in november december actually getting flowers some games do but i mean uh you know i'm trying to think one of the the bigger games that got released last year uh avatar i think that was a december drop and a lot of people really love that game but it's like it didn't even happen because 
who's going to go back to say, oh, Avatar from December. Yeah, let's bring that back into the mix because, you know, it's hard to remember the games from January. And that actually takes me into a point with with um, the winner gamer. He says there should be a category for games for the first half of the year that were forgotten. I think um, of Prince of Persia. I, like I loved oh, that God, game. Yeah. yeah. That game obviously is not getting a sequel. So much the thing of the tumult. And I feel like all the bad press has stopped people embracing that game. Even though it's 15 bucks on Walmart and Black Friday, go get it, play it. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Please. Yeah. 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 So it's it's very hard to understand what the best uh it, and just to let you know, CJ, we always review the games just because we're tired old guys with kids and things like that we always wait until like january the second the second week of january to finally do our reviews basically our game of the years we call it the couchies because we couch on it we game on a couch uh we do it that and then we pick our game of the year is what the only the only game that the highest rated game between mark and i that's our game of the year. So so it's hard at times. Basically, it's, it basically it, comes down to the one single game that we've game both we've played. Because played. Ah. Yep. Uh, otherwise, it's it, our lists are usually fairly dissimilar. We might have to go to like number 25. By the time we hit yeah. 25, what is it? So we'll see how it goes. But we feel yeah. like that's a good way to say like we're giving flowers to a game we both enjoyed. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we both have we both have different tastes. So it's not like we want to have that. That That's the official one. But every, we do go to the, the top five and then we do dark horses. And and we also say some other things like that. So, um, yeah. So hmm. people can go back and see what we picked and they can and they can blame us if they want. But that's OK. We're, we are we are open to criticism, but with that, um, the CJs got announced, and the biggest criticism was that they did open up the category of game of the year to include DLC. Mm-hmm. The fun part about yeah. this is the game the game awards, and I'm not sure. Are you part of that body? Okay, no. So there is like what a hundred or so uh, media bodies that are part of the nomination process. Uh, They nominate the games, it gets whittled in, and then they also then go down to vote for those actual winners. I think the, 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 the public gets 10% of the vote is how it works. And I think the only category that's accepted to that is accessibility, which makes sense because if you don't have accessibility issues, you really shouldn't be commenting on it. Well, you know, basically, right. unless it helps you like subtitles. I think everybody likes subtitles now. <laughs> it's just Heck it's just yeah. the way we watch media with subtitles. We love it. But, you know, even like accessibility, like I like the fact in Dragon Age, I can select the level of difficulty in each category. Mm. That's accessibility that. for a lot of people, which is just like I hate puzzles, but I love combat or I hate uh combat but i love puzzles so um even i forgot what game it was oh god of war they finally patched in the fact that the npcs couldn't tell you how to solve a puzzle (laughs) so it's like the opposite (laughs) of accessibility it's like stop telling me what to do don't help me um so yeah with all of these which is funny because i know jeff gets a lot of crap but quite honestly jeff didn't he just said you can nominate it but didn't mean that people had to nominate uh, you know, Shadow of the Erd Tree, which is the big one with with um, Elden Ring, which was the game of the year last year. Uh, or no, uh, it was actually um, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 that won last year, but Elden Ring won, the, uh, I believe, the year before. So, and the fact is that none of the, the nominees, you can't see who actually nominated the games or <laughs> voted for them, means that Jeff has to take all of the pain and you don't get to actually see all of the Elden Ring stands that said, yeah, it should be there, but don't blame me because I don't want the, the heat. So what do you think? Uh, should DLC be available as a game of the year? Because there was a game of the year edition, I believe, with Elden Ring and Shadow of the Tree, but you still had to uh, play Elden Ring to a certain point to get to Shadow of the Tree. So it wasn't accessible to myself or Mark who have never played the game, really, or I played it a little bit. What about you, CJ? Where do you stand? I think yes. I think this is actually a good move because uh, a lot of times DLC is, I mean, it's more of the game that you love. uh, And why, if it's something that you pump a lot of hours into or are really excited about playing, 
why wouldn't it be treated like any other game release? Like, I, I kind of feel like at this point, sure, why not? Like, if, if it's something that we as gamers are loving the existence of, yeah, let it be eligible for an award. Do you think people would be happier if it was like a Elden Ring 2, Electric Boogaloo? Like, if, if they released it as that, like, oh, it's different then. I mean, it's, I don't know. Because <laughs> well, this was like 40 out in 2024 then, right? No, no, but if it was like they just said, we're not doing a sequel, but we're doing an expansion, but we're just going to call it a sequel um, and it's 40 bucks. I mean, but they would have charged it was 60 like bucks. Like Elden Ring 1.5 or something. Yeah. Does like the, 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 does the number or the fact that it's an expansion or DLC or additional content like that, the, the lines are so blurred. They but the, the slippery slope for me, I suppose, is do ongoing games then get the same kind of recognition? Like if we had a banger season of Fortnite and everyone was like, this was like basically a new start, a new beginning, or like just the best season of Fortnite we've seen since 2018 or something like that. Like, can that then be nominated for game of the year? Same with like, destiny, right? Like destiny, when it like the taken right. King, and that's, that's made guess, the game yeah. so much better. It was the best part yeah. of, you know, this part of destiny. Um, and then, you know, the most hilarious example I can think of is like Super Mario 8 Deluxe Booster Pack. Could that make Super Mario 8 a game that came out in 2016? Right? Yeah. yeah, we talked about that, Mark. We said the the DLC for that gave that game new life. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we jacked because I'm like, that's not an expansion, it's DLC. Yeah, like, yeah the final like, wave doubled. came out in 2023. Doubled the amount um, of courses in that game. Yeah. Would you not count that as one yeah. of the best games of the year? I mean, I think you probably would. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I would but, for sure. And then um, that new but it is funny that I it's think like of, Super Mario Kart 8 2014. Is that 14? Is that 10 years old? No, I thought it was 2013, yeah. wasn't it? 13? I don't That's think it was. funnier. It might have been 13, actually. Uh, no, release date, May 29th, 2014. So the game is oh, okay. 10 oh. years old. and But, like, I mean, even at the time that the final wave of DLC, so it should have been, like, last year's nominee, November yeah. of 2023, that would have been the most hilarious game of the year ever. Yeah. Um, you know, <laughs> I mean, just, <laughs> like, <laughs> double the course pack. Yeah, Super Mario 8 Deluxe wins uh, Game of the Year. Or, would you know, like a race, even sports game of the year, I think would have been a, a hilarious, but like worthwhile. Like you said, CJ, like it was, it doubled the amount of courses. There were brand new courses, amazing remakes. Like I get it. And for, for a gaming landscape that is so filled with ongoing games, games that are getting patches, games that feel new a year or two years after no man's sky as an example or whatever. Like yep. there's, there's so much here that I, I do, I see what the issue is because it does sound a little ridiculous. And of course I picked Mario Kart eight to like exemplify the ridiculousness of like nominating a 2014 game in 2023, but like, why not? You know, if like, that's the landscape that we're in, embrace it don't shame a game that it's like hey this is 10 years and it's still going strong and it's better now than it ever was like hell yeah give them their flowers or you know give them that award if it deserves it it deserves it um uh, yeah what, what about games that never got a game of the year award opportunity minecraft uh, mm. you know, uh, I'm trying to think of like No Man's Sky. Well, no Man's I mean, Sky. maybe No Man's Sky did. Yeah, but I mean, it's all these games, it's For like... though, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of games, or even Fortnite. I don't think Fortnite was ever up for a game of the year, but look where it is. Like now. ongoing I mean, and that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Like, But that's yeah. never a serious game, or like, you know, one of the t serious top awards. No, uh, um, I think yeah, of The yeah. Witcher 3, and they had two of the best expansions of all time, but they were not considered for it. And I'm like, I... That's one of my best experiences of the year. So there you go. It's very, and then if you're if you miss the game at first, and you get a game where it's like it's coming out now, and you get all those new experiences together, it feels like, well, it's my game of the year. I don't know. It just feels like if it's part of the category, mm -hmm. and it's allowed, sure, and it's allowed in this category. So if it is, don't 
yeah. get frustrated because it's part yeah. of the rules. Play by the rules. Uh, if you want to exclude it like the Golden Joystick Awards does, that's fine. But if it's there, don't. And then everybody Game Awards can have their own distinction of rules. But um, it's kind of weird that we're just upset about something that, quite honestly, is... I mean, unless you're saying there's only... Maybe we should expand the category to have, like, 10 nominees so you don't feel like anybody's excluded, but... Even number 11 feels excluded. Believe me. Uh, we talk about college football. I'm a big college football fan right now. Uh, it, there used to be four teams in the playoff. Before that was just two. Now it's 12, and people will get still get excluded when it's 12 teams. So I just don't know if there's a perfect recipe for this. But um, Well, I think the interesting thing is the, sort of the litmus test on this is whether Erd Tree wins mm-hmm. or not. If yeah. it doesn't, then I think people would be a lot more accepting of it. If it does, people will be like, what is this like DLC winning game of the year? That's messed up. Yeah. yeah. We'll see. It, it kind of feels like media in general. I read something right before we started, so I didn't actually dive in, but I saw the, the, the title for the first time, I think ever. Um, every single top earning movie this year has been a sequel. Um, or like an existing franchise or something like it. It's there's there's not like an original kind of movie franchise. There's no Barbie there. this year. The, yeah. yeah, there's <laughs> nothing like that, right? So it's um that that's pretty interesting, uh, and I think that's kind of reflective even in in the games media, uh, like that a lot of the stuff that we're seeing is. I don't know if it's a safe choice or whatever, but like it's building on what's already established, which makes a lot of sense. Um, It does. You know, if you already know you have a player base, if there's already something and whether it's a a sequel or a piece of DLC or an expansion or whatever, playing to that kind of safety net makes a lot of financial sense. So I, you know, I, I'm really wondering if that's kind of like maybe just like 2024's thing is like the year of like safe bets or like, you know, known existing properties or something like that. Like, is that, I don't know, maybe where we're at with media as well. Um, because if that's what maybe most movies are like, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think of like maybe wicked isn't really, I mean, it's based off of the stage production but it's not oh. a sequel so like if that breaks in maybe that will kind of break this but everything else has been a sequel well and then we've got like the game, a movie like terrifier 3 which if you follow that like weird horror franchise that's an indie film that costs like a hundred thousand yeah. dollars now made like eighty thousand eighty million dollars so yeah I, I think audience games find an audience and, and so maybe to bring this back that's, that's your so, bottle Exactly. So the game of the years for the TGAs was Astrobot, Bellatro, Black Myth Wukong, Elden Ring, Shadow of the Earth Tree, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Metaphor Refantasio. So out of these, we've got one, two, three, four completely new IP. Unless you count the Astrobot VR game or the, the weird, like, playstation 5 launch like weird like welcome to playstation here's astrobot he's going to show us how to use console i feel like we've got some new ip that feels like oh there's something for everybody you've got a mm-hmm. card game that launched on consoles now on things you've got a, a platformer that people love you've got a interesting action combat souls like with black myth wukong uh, and then you've got Metaphor Ran Fantasia, which is, uh, I mean, if you think about it, uh, Atlas and their studios making Persona and making a new whole new franchise is just a huge thing. Uh, has found oh, yeah. a huge audience. I don't know what you count as Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, but after what I know, it is essentially a different game with pieces or influences from the original games, but um, not this Final Fantasy VII game I played on PlayStation 1. By off by far because it's yeah. got a completely different combat system and different storytelling. Um, so the only game that I feel like is completely like going back to what you previously played is that Shadow of the Earth Tree. But a lot of people would say that's the biggest expansion in history, and it, it get added new gameplay. 
So that's worthy of where I spent my time. So I don't know. Is there, yeah. I mean, based on this list, is there anything you see that is missing that you feel is uh, a detriment to gaming or to your tastes? Hmm. I don't think so. Uh, maybe Helldivers 2 is missing off of this list. I That's a good call out because that feels like a game series that is gaining like traction. It's huge and is yeah. now on PC. So it's now got even bigger and it's doing something different in the multiplayer space, which we mm. haven't seen before. And even though there was an original Helldivers a long time ago on the on the Vita, yeah. uh, nobody played that. <laughs> No, <laughs> no. This is really its sort of debut as a as a franchise. Yeah, I played it first with my son. My son put many hours in that game, and we just had a blast. Right. I think I ran into like nuke warheads on the ground many times, and I still died many times, even though I wasn't supposed to do that. But I still did it. Yep, blame me, um, Mark. Anything on there that I mean? I don't know if you played any of these games. Uh, I have Bellatro on my phone. That's about it. That's, okay. uh, that's really, that's really it for me. Um, so that, and that's, that's the, the tough part, right? Cause I think like something like Prince of Persia, but mm-hmm. like, I can't compare it to one of these games. Right. So, um, that's going to sit high right now on, you know, our personal couchy awards, like for, for my list, I think, you know, Prince of Persia is going to be up there. Um, but I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't know if I can argue this. I've I've watched enough of Astrobot to know that that game just looks absolutely incredible. Um, yeah, so it's 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 tough to it's really tough to argue with any of this. And the Elden Ring thing, like I brought up before, if they had have just released this as a standalone expansion, Elden Ring one point five or just released a disc where if you wanted to skip that and just play shadow of the earth tree, like would that make a difference with this being on there and shut people up? Like if you consider it that way, like it adds new gameplay, it's a massive expansion. Like does it matter? Um, well, you know, I, don't I mean, you can complain argue about anything on this list. No. And it's funny because destiny typically when it launches something new, you're new to Destiny. Here's some stuff that gets you up to speed so you can play that first thing. Right. Uh, same thing with uh, Liberty City uh, or Liberty. Uh, blank on the name from uh, Cyberpunk. Liberty City. You could essentially start that mm-hmm. mission and be ready to go if you own Cyberpunk. So you didn't have to get to a certain point in, in, in Cyberpunk. It would just start you off if you wanted to do it. Like I just stumbled my way into that. Jumped in there. Yeah. Exactly. So maybe that's something that they could do mm-hmm. to appease people. But to your point, I mean, like, I don't know if that happens in the future, uh, but still, that's frustrating. I did notice um, best VR AR game. None of the games were included in that list of overall best games, but great games are still included in a category that still gets recognized, which is nice. But do you feel upset that uh, those games are not elevated or is it just too niche still for like the 100 and 200 million people that are playing games uh that they still need special hardware is that still just the reality of the uh current status of vr you mean thinking about a vr ar game for game of the year yes that we're saying uh hmm. because i think half-life alex was the only one that really got pushed yeah Hmm. that's interesting i mean i think well, I, the general gaming populace really has to accept VR, which I don't think they've done. I don't think will happen. Uh, just kind of like mobile. It's yeah. not accepted. That's exactly the the metaphor I was going to use was was mobile gaming. Yeah, it's it sucks because there are a lot of really good VR AR games. You know, Asgard's Wrath is a full blown game. And well, yeah people should try that game and Arkham shadow, same sort of deal. This is a big budget, real game. And yeah, if console gamers aren't going to get excited about it, well, too bad, but uh, you do. I do kind of want to see a VR game get 
top honors. I don't know when that's going to happen because I do think there is a stigma and there will be for a while. Yeah, yeah. it helps when Quest puts out a $300 headset, though. That definitely That helps. is true. That'll get more people yeah. in the door for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So last question. Uh, do we need better categories? So I want you gentlemen to, I'm going to say these categories I found that are just kind of interesting. I'm not sure if they're clear to everybody, a little vague. Uh, we have eSport teams, stars. I don't know if that's more of a niche thing that why does it get that pub? Maybe it's because of the audience that Jeff is speaking to. Games for change, which I totally get what it is in my mind, but maybe not everybody does, which can be conflicting. Maybe it's setting a good message. Uh, and that's a challenge because it's like it's a little vague. Most anticipated feels like a uh, pre-order category, which is weird. Fast adapt- adaptation, that's actually a different medium. Don't know if that matters. Uh, best hardware. And then the, the my biggest problem is when they combine categories, where I hate that they do it because it's it's mm-hmm. kind of sh- giving short shrift to different categories. Best sim and strategy. I mean, tactical versus strategic versus turn based versus other things. There's a lot there, and it doesn't mean this the fans overlap necessarily. So it seems like that's really hurting it. Best sports versus driving. Um, I mean, F one versus <laughs> Madden. It just doesn't make sense. I mean it seems like two different fan bases and the people that will divide the, the vote. And so certain games will never get their flowers. And then mm. action adventure versus action. I have never understood this is, <laughs> a, is, is adventure just puzzles with some action. And then we have action, yeah. which is probably just an FPS game. I just feel like we need new categories or better categories to really identify what gaming is today versus what it was when, you know, somebody said, Oh, we're going to, put these things in categories. I don't know. Is there a category you'd like? Yeah. Best glitch. (laughs) Yes. 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 Todd, we've talked about this before that there's so much on Twitch. There's so much like being captured. There's so like, there's a capture button on consoles now. Yes. A hundred percent CJ. Yes. Yes. (laughs) It's we, the category like, that no publisher wants to get into. Though. No, I had exactly. goats, <laughs> but I had goats in my attic in Dragon Age. I'm like, what are they doing up there? I don't know. It was great. I had a volcano. I had a, a cyclone in Far Cry Four that I grabbed the handle of a car and it shot the car up in the air. And I'm like, that made. That's the moment I remember for my my whole year. It was great. Hell yeah. We when we talked about this before, I think it was on last year's award show. And, and we talked about this category as something that I think would grab audiences that aren't hardcore gamers that wouldn't normally watch the game award. And this would be that memeable moment for them to jump yes. into the more serious categories. This is the yeah. America's funniest videos category, the TikTok shareable category, but then it's putting eyeballs on the game awards. And if you put a fun, goofy, video game only because you're not going to, you know, I like, I don't yeah. know if you're going to get best bloopers in movies <laughs> as an award or something like that, but like have fun with it. You know what I mean? Like I think doing oh, yeah. that instead of like most anticipated, because I just like Todd, you said it's like a commercial. It's like vaporware. It's who gives a shit if we're going to see GTA six for the most anticipated 17 years in a row, just put the damn game out or shut up about it. Um, like I can't wait about you know for for as much as the next guy, but like I don't care. But like something like that, I would watch every single clip that was submitted of oh, yeah. a crazy ass glitch in a game, one hundred percent. But my eyes glaze over when it's like, hey, here's another trailer for a game that was announced six years ago. Uh, like uh, I'll tell yeah. you, man, uh, Spike VGX, I think uh, nailed it in 2010 when they had the biggest badass category (laughs) (laughs) they're like what are you even doing here let's get down to the brass tacks who kicks so much ass so uh cj so you want biggest glitch i love that because it's essentially can be like that can be like where the the public or the the gamer universe comes together and they bring everything that's awesome in the world of weirdness together i think it's awesome yeah yeah mark uh what category do you want 
I mean, I want biggest glitch, but I'll also go with like, um, like a best kill category or like that shouldn't have worked category. When you see those kind of things of like someone like falling into the sky in a, in a, you know, like Fortnite style game or something like that. Yep. And they're like, I have half a split second to make this sniper shot or I'm going to splat on the ground. And they somehow make the shot and they land and it's like victory Royale. It's like, that shouldn't have happened. And the Twitch streamers freaking out more than everyone else is. And it's just like, those once in a lifetime moments that were somehow captured because of where modern technology is and streaming and all that kind of stuff. Like those kind of, again, fun, memeable categories of like, how the hell did that happen? And I think that's a counter to the glitch. I think you do the glitch category and then you counter it with like, yeah, you don't think esports athletes are athletes. Like watch the reaction time on this kid. (laughs) <laughs> watch the skill of this guy who shot a rocket launcher at a gun the gun flew to him he caught it in the air and then got the winning headshot in halo or something you know like we've all seen those clips and i'm sure there's like a few running through everyone's head that's listening right now um those kind of like video game only this is a really cool medium let's not try to copy the Oscars. Let's celebrate some of the cool, wacky, fun shit that happens in this medium. Those kind of awards. That's, I agree. Yeah, I, totally. I think of like Tears of the Kingdom when people could like construct things and yeah. they just found the weirdest yeah. way to like make traversal happen and do these things. Even in yeah. uh, uh, Echoes, of, uh, Echoes of Wisdom, I just found they found ways to manipulate all of those things to win a race or something like that. So yeah. I think it just, I think... Game Awards should be a prestigious, but also of the time as well. What was happening in the industry or like what was going on in the world of like memeable moments. So I think between glitch and like those type of things, I think those are great because you will forget those things. But when people remember the Leroy Jenkins, the things like that, I think (laughs) it makes gaming special, right? Absolutely. Or arrow to the knee or, or, or something like that, where it just feels like it makes gaming feel special because, um, sometimes gaming feels very like everybody's doing something different, but there's certain things that we all get and it brings us all together. So it's almost like that community moment of the year. I don't know. Something like that would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, (laughs) This is another category that I want to bring up cyber vixen of the year in 2006 for the VGX. So we've come a long way. Uh, And it was (laughs) Alex Vance from half-life two. She's a vixen. No, sure. No, no, no. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's just very, very weird. No so comment. I would, uh, so I would say a category. I definitely want action adventure, and I want to uh, broken up. I want to have yeah. a shooter category, just because mm. shooters are so ubiquitous. They shouldn't be brought in and take on a game like Astrobot or something like that. They should just Great. definitely be like a, a shooter, FPS, whatever you want to call it. But I feel like that type of game category is um it's easier to 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 glom on to what it is but also understand the the big games that are against it like cod you know cod and then maybe you get like a, a war uh like a, a warhammer space marine i don't know i'm just trying to think of like you know to so make sure those games because when was the last time call of duty won game of the award the year award it doesn't mm. but it should still get yeah. something if yeah. it's if it's that good so yeah well, that is it for our show. Uh, thank you so much, CJ, for being on. Uh, this was sure. uh, this was really fun. Uh, before we go, um, thank you for joining us. Hopefully, you have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, by the way, uh, what is your favorite Thanksgiving part of the meal? <laughs> uh, the stuffing. I'm a stuffing. Uh, not a dressing. Not a, stuffing. Not a dressing. Yeah, you know stovetop or yeah whatever you whatever you got i, I like uh yeah i like good stuffing yeah Excellent. it's good so gravy. tell people oh oh gravy's great yeah. it's cranberry sauce if you want to put that in everything you go you do you yeah um tell people where they can find you what you're up to and sure. what, what they should look out for well, uh, you can find me on social media as super pack that's s u p e r p a c uh, Pac-Man, like we were talking about earlier, that's that's a reference there. Although every political season, I get a lot of 
at replies accidentally yep. and it really bothers me but uh and then the podcast uh, player one podcast.com uh or at p1 podcast on all the socials and then i work for enhance who makes tetris effect connected res infinite and humanity and uh buy all of those games they're going to be on sale for you know various holiday sales and they're all awesome uh and yeah i think that's it awesome excellent i I can't wait to see what you guys do next in vr uh it's always something that really feels like it changes the uh just the industry going forward well hopefully hopefully so yeah absolutely uh mark where can you be found you can find me. I have not joined Blue Sky. I feel like you I should do it, man. I know. It's now is the has, time. Uh, um, now is yeah, the time um, if you want to find make um, your own path. Yeah, I'm late to the game. Um, but you can find me. So so far, Instagram threads, and I promise I will go on Blue Sky and try to get the same username. So Canardian underscore Jedi, um, and we'll we'll see if I'm Blue Skying by next week. All right. All right. Uh, I have joined Blue Sky. Uh, I love it compared to Threads. Uh, the, the, just some of the things they do during there is really cool. You can actually create a um, basically almost like a starter pack of people or groups you love and then uh, share those out in the world. I love that because it's a great way to, to make sure your followers are following all their awesome people. So I'm at Todd Oxtra on Blue Skies, at Secret Friends Unite on Blue Skies, at T Oxtra at Secret Friends Unite on threads follow us there we'd love to have you join us and uh you know what if you like football we do a fantasy football podcast and many people do that so we do that and we're very nerdy we're the waiver wire wizards so there you go so with that uh cj mark thank you and remember folks it's always better to game together this podcast is part of the secret friends unite podcasting network available on apple podcasts spotify and podcast services around the galaxy as well as video on our youtube channel you can support secret friends unite by becoming a patreon member get bonus programs and more over at patreon.com secret friends unite join our discord community for even more discussions on all things geek for all the latest updates on secret friends unite make sure to follow us on threads at secret.friends.unite and visit secretfriendsunite.com find our merchandise at tpublic and redbubble thanks for listening and may the force live long and prosper